Ocean Hills at its best is when we are in it together. Good morning. I've got my support team here, Shelly Ochi and Jamie and Heather Howard. And it's Heather's birthday today, so why don't we give her a big hand? So yeah, this fall we start our 15th year of ministry with ISI, hard to believe. And I know Ocean Hills has been with us almost that whole time. Um, actually, I don't know if you know John Ireland and I go way back. He was my high school counselor in Oakland. And he discipled me, mentored me. And he was a new Christian at that time. John, are you here? I don't know if he's here. <laughs> John uh, was a new Christian, but he was so excited about his faith. He was reading book after book after book. And like, when we get together, he said, oh, you got to read this book. You got to read this book. You got to read this book. And I was not a reader at all. I didn't want to. <laughs> but John was great. He really, he had impact in my life. So thanks, John. <laughs> um, I, went, I wanted everybody who has ever participated with ISI over the last 14 years, whether you've been a friendship partner, matched with a student, you've helped uh, set up for our Thanksgiving dinner to serve uh, the city, or gone to our cafe that we've got going now, just stand up. I just want to see, like, who has ever done anything with ISI over the last 14 years? Great. Thanks a lot, you guys. Woo. Um, before coming to Santa Barbara, Kim and I were short-term missionaries in Japan for two years. And when we were there, we were, of course, praying about whether we were going to spend our lives in Japan and be career missionaries. And we were trying to learn the language, learn Japanese, while we were teaching English. And um, we really struggled with the language, and that was a big factor for us in um, deciding to come here. And I just want to share a funny story of how Kim was trying to use her Japanese in front of a church that we were getting introduced to in Japan. And she was trying to say, this is my husband in Japanese, which is watashi no shujin desu. And instead of saying shujin, she stretched out the U and she ended up saying shujin. And everybody started laughing in the church. And we're going, what happened? You know, what? Later on, we found out that shujin actually means prisoner. So she said, this is my prisoner. That was funny. So anyways, we thought, can we really learn the language here and do ministry in Japan? And then we met a lot of Japanese Christians in Japan that became Christians because they became international students and came to America. And they met a Christian, they got involved in a Bible study or fellowship. And so we started thinking, hey, we could reach Japanese people here in the States and other international folks. So we looked into ISI, and then God led us to Santa Barbara. ISI wanted us to start the ministry here. So um, we're so happy to be here, and Ocean Hills has been a big part of our ministry, supporting us and being involved, so we're thankful. Uh, I want to share a passage in the Bible that became, when I was going through my ISI training, the passage that I really clean on to for my ministry, that when I'm down or discouraged and I'm going, why am I doing this? I always go back to Acts 2, when God first brought the Holy Spirit upon the believers and they had this miraculous experience. Um, if you remember, in Acts 2, they're praying in the upper room and they've been doing that day after day for about 10 days after Jesus' ascension. And it was the Pentecost festival where Hundreds of thousands of people came into Jerusalem from around the Roman world. And this is what happened. Let me read this to you. And Shelley loaned me her glasses because I forgot mine. So I've got these beautiful <laughs> glasses to wear. So Acts 2, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard the, in their own language what was being spoken. Utter, utterly amazed, they asked, what are these Aren't all these people Galileans? 
then how is it that each of us hear them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia Judea, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phygra, Philip. I debated whether to read all these <laughs> countries, by the way. Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs. We hear that them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they all ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. And then it goes on, Peter gets up and preaches to the crowd and tells them the good news of Jesus. And 3,000 3, people became believers that day. I love this passage because God chose the perfect moment for the Holy Spirit to come. He chose the time of Pentecost during this festival where hundreds of thousands of people came into Jerusalem to give the Holy Spirit to the believers so that they could spread the good news to the nations that came there. And I believe that's what God's heart is for all the world, all the nations to know the good news of Jesus. And God, for whatever reason, has brought the nations to the U.S. There's now nearly a million international students in the U.S. and it keeps climbing year after year. And in Santa Barbara, there's well over 3,000 international students studying in Santa Barbara. And many of them are from closed countries like Saudi Arabia or China that are close to missionary activity. And we have a wonderful opportunity to find a student. You can go on State Street and find an international student like that, and they would love to talk to you. You can make a friend with an international student and just love them and share life with them and share the love of Jesus with them. I've got, um, oh, that's my family, by the way, Kim. <laughs> um, next slide is, I just want to give you an update since last time I was here, what God has done. So last time I was here, I said that Kim started an international wives club for wives of, of students at UCSB. And she found two other Americans to help her with this and about four other believing international student women. And things have really taken off in this last year. Um, they have up to 17 women coming from 10 different countries. And every week um, they have, you know, breakfast or brunch together and then they get into the Word using what we call discovery questions, which is an inductive way of studying the Bible, which allows the students to really explore the passage. And the students are just eating this up. Um, Natasha from, um, from Russia, just this summer when they were studying the book of Ruth, she said, I, I never knew about this story. This story has like everything about life in this, in this story, good and the bad. I really love this story. And the students are really being impacted by the scriptures. And Priscilla from Belgium, she's not in the picture. Priscilla is a believer who's been helping to facilitate the, the, the Bible time. And she this summer said, you know what? I want to do this with my husband. When we go back to Japan, I want to have a small group in our house and have a Bible study and do this. And Kim and I are just going, yeah, because that's what our vision is, to see the students then go back to their countries and be in ministry to their friends in their own countries. So we're really excited about the Wives Club ministry. There's one other picture. The next one is um, Kim and I with our friends, Min Chi and Cynthia from Taiwan. And this is actually at Min Chi's baptism last Thanksgiving. But um, just a year and a half ago, he was not a Christian yet. And I started to meet with him, read the Bible. His wife is a believer, goes to the Wives Club and she's been praying for him and so it was really fun to see him, through all the prayers that people have been praying for him, come to Jesus and be excited to get baptized last fall. And then he has another friend from Taiwan who I'm friends with, and he said, let's start a Bible study with him. So the three of us have been meeting, I'm sorry, my mouth is dry, um, meeting every week at UCSB and uh, reading the Bible using this inductive method, and it's just been awesome to see this young man um, start to open his heart to, to Jesus. So uh, I'm going to ask Shelly to share a little bit about what it's meant to be involved with the Thanksgiving ministry and also friendship partnering. So, yeah, come on. Okay. So um, 
When we first met Tim and Kim, Tom and I were excited and went, let's be a friendship partner. So we got a student, Kayo from Japan, um, a student at UCSB, and she just started, we just invited her to our house. So she started coming over and we'd have dinner and then she started inviting her friends and then her boyfriend and she just became part of the family. Um, Kayo graduated many years ago, but we still keep in contact with her. It's really wonderful, okay. She never asked me to talk in front, I always cry. You all know that. Um, yeah, Kayo is not a believer yet. However, we had so many spiritual conversations with her that if we hadn't been in this ministry, I don't know if she would have ever had, you know, I mean, at Christmas time, it should be like, well, what's, this, what's Christmas about? And I don't understand this nativity scene. And it was just an open door to tell her. And at Easter, she came to the service and, you know, we talked to her about Jesus and new life. And she was so interested. She hasn't made a commitment, but I still pray for her. And... Um, so another fun thing that we did that my family has always really loved is the Thanksgiving banquet that um, is a, a Montecito Covenant and a group from Ocean Hills every year comes up and helps set up for that. And um, the students love it and the families love it because then all the friendship partners all get together and we have this meal of Thanksgiving food and the international students are like, wow. So this is what a turkey looks like. And you know, this is what stuffing, and they hear about the food and stuff, but also they hear about what Thanksgiving is. Tim puts together this funny little skit with little hats and little, you know, Indian feather things and, and has a skit going on with the students and the friendship partners. And it's just fun, but it's still Christ focused because Thanksgiving is about thanking God. And so it's just a subtle way, again, to bring God into their lives, and it's an amazing ministry. Thanks, Shelly. And Heather, Heather and Jimmy have been like key people in our Friday night ministry. I'll share, I'll touch on a little bit later, but um, share about our Friday night ministry and what that's meant to you. So Jimmy and I have been involved in ISI both as friendship partners before we were even dating, I think. Um, and we've also been involved in the Friday night ministry, which has just been great because it's, we get together at a professor's house, have a meal, have discussion time, and you can either have an English conversation discussion or you can go to the Bible time. The students can choose. There's no pressure. No matter what, we're going to enjoy hanging out with them. And um, the way that I've gotten really plugged into that is, for me, I love hospitality, I love food, so I help the professor's wife um, coordinate the food. And so I spend a lot of time in the kitchen. I don't actually have a ton of time interacting with the students, but I kind of thought this, you know, I was like, oh, this isn't very impactful. Like, I want to love on the students, but I can't do two places at once. At the so we thought about it, and some of the other volunteers, um, we decided to have a cooking class. So we had the students over to my house for an American cooking class. And we have a little two-bedroom apartment, and they came in, and you know, we made uh, chicken fried steak and chocolate chip cookies and mashed potatoes, and they were just like, oh, this is so great. How do you do that? Oh, and what do you do with that? And it was just so great to have you know, 10 students in our house hmm. and to be able to share that, that, and it just, food opens up so much conversation, and to just hear them share about food from their home, mm -hmm. countries, and there's so much that, you know, we can't travel to every country that we want to, but there's so many countries that we can learn about their culture from real people there, not the tourist version, but the real version, mm -hmm. and just ISI is this great sharing of cultures, and um, it's been fabulous to be a part of that, and We've also done, you know, movie nights at our house to use some of Jimmy's movie collection. <laughs> so um, it's really been a great chance to get connected. And just one more quick story. The, so being involved in the food part of ministry um, this last year, every other Friday night, feeling a little like, I wish I connected with the students more this year and a little discouraged about this, but like, 
okay, you know, this is good. Jimmy's connecting, so it's great to see my husband connecting with these students, and to do ministry together is just amazing. And at the last um, Friday night meeting that we had, Three separate girls came up to me in absolute tears, giving me hugs, wanting pictures with me, and saying, I'm going to miss you so much. Thank you so much for everything that you've done this year. This has been the place where I felt welcomed and at peace. And I, this has been, Friday nights has been the highlight of my trip to the States. And I can't remember a specific conversation with any of these girls that, oh, we, ha- we really connected on this or that. And, but the fact that them being welcomed, someone wanting to hold a conversation or provide a meal or to simply open their home was the most impactful thing to them. Because it's hard enough being in college and living in IV and trying to get used to that. But then to be able to meet regular people, <laughs> adults or young adults or whatnot, and connect with them is just, that's the part that made them feel like home again and help them to ha- know about our culture to take it back and not say that America looks like Isla Vista because that's not really what we want <laughs> Santa Barbara's name to be. So um, it's been great both financially supporting the ministry and being involved both in the Friendship Partner Program and Friday night dinners and it's mm-hmm. just somewhere where our heart is. Great. Thank you so much. So how you can um, serve ISI Santa Barbara, this slide. Um, first of all, you can be an international friendship partner. Um, I'm getting sign-ups right now from City College, students that want to have an American friend. And in a few weeks, we'll do the same at UCSB. So if you want to be in a one-on-one friendship, either with your family or one-on-one, you can just be in a friendship, meet with them twice a month, and just do your normal... D- Uh, activities like go to the farmer's market, go to your kids' soccer games with them, and just enjoy your life with a student. Um, Another way is through our conversation cafe. Jessica has been involved in our cafe ministry, and we've we've had a team of Westmont students do this um, and others. It's a weekly ministry downtown, and um, we get students from City College, from the ELS Language School. A lot of Saudi Arabian students are coming. And so it's just hanging out with the students, enjoying some food with them, and talking and getting to know the students. You're welcome to come check that out. So um, come see me afterwards and know more about that. And then um, providing food for our Friday night ministry. So we're always looking for small groups or people to provide a salad or a a main dish for our Friday night uh, uh, ministry. So if you love cooking, you think you can do a, a meal, come see me afterwards. And then um, pray for us. Uh, If you want to receive our newsletters and prayer updates, we'd love to get you on the list. Um, By the way, I think there's a card in the... um, Yeah, you can kind of check off things there. But ways that you can be praying for us is um, just for the start of a new school year with new students in Bible studies, um, other people that have been in Bible studies, that God would really touch their hearts. Pray for... There's a new international student director at UCSB that I'm just getting to know. Pray for good relationships with UCSB. And then um, I'm throwing this out as a big dream. We would love to have a new ministry house close to UCSB where we could have the wives club, even Friday nights maybe, in our own home instead of our tiny little 1,000 square foot home. So um, pray that God might provide a new home to rent or something so that we could have a ministry close to UCSB and actually have a house for ministry. And then, uh, of course, supporting us. Um, Kim, just last year, increased her hours now that our kids are in school or preschool. So we're still raising support for her to be at full time. So we still have about $700 a month to raise. And in addition to the new things, way things are working at Ocean Hills. So about $700 a month we're looking for. So please consider that. Pray about that. Um, and you can check something off on the card or come see me afterwards. So thanks so much for giving me all this time to share. I'm sure we went over, but um, okay. Shelley's well, I'm going to pray. pray. And um, yeah, join me in prayer. Lord, thank you for um, Tim and Kim and the vision that you had 
um, that you gave them to come to Santa Barbara. And we thank you for all the students' lives that they have touched and for the way that they get to coordinate other um, friendship partners and those of us Americans so that we can meet with the international students. I just thank you for that. So now, Lord, I lift up the ministry as the new students are arriving and Tim and Kim are just meeting new students and continuing their ministry with other students that are still here. Lord, I pray that the students would be open to hearing your word, touch their hearts. Lord, I pray that they would come and come to know you. And then as they go back to their own countries, that they would continue in their faith. Lord, I pray for housing for Tim and Kim. We pray for financial support for them, Mm -hmm. for their family life, Lord, protect them. And Lord, we just ask that you cover this ministry and all the students, Tim and Kim, and all those that help minister. In your name we pray, amen. Amen.